All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're just gonna jump in and review the analytics dashboard from the Silver Bullet session that we had in the last video. So let's dive in and I'll catch you guys soon. All right, so we are back into the FX replay session, the Silver Bullet session. Today, we are just going to be going through the analytics of the last session that we did. And so let's dive in. Okay, so what do we see here firstly? Well, we have 6% profit overall we have our new balance we have our win rate the amount of trades that we've taken so 11 seven of those being wins four of them being losses and zero break-even trades now if we look at the break-even threshold here i want to increase that to about 0.5 okay so that's basically going to tell me that any trade that was less than 0.5 r is going to be considered break-even okay so if i submit now we can see the real win rate, which 55%. So out of the uh, 11 trades, five of them were winners, four of them were losses, and two of them are break-evens, okay? Equaling 11. We can see our nice equity curve right here. Obviously not that many trades. However, we are building up and eventually that is gonna be uh, some excellent data to go and look at, okay? So if we just scroll down, we can see right here our average risk to reward. And so it was 1.43. We were targeting two Rs, but there were a couple break-evens there, right? And so that's gonna, reduce our average RR. You can see our max RR was 2.04. And if we look over here, we can see our ideal average. So meaning that we should just keep all of our targets at 2.2 R. Now, this you want to wait until you accumulate more data. Same with the max ideal. Okay, you want to accumulate more data, more than 11 trades. Ideally, 100 plus trades would be would be more statistically relevant than just 11. So you, the more the better, honestly. But you can see here, uh, after a while, say you take 100 trades, you can say, hey, my average trade uh, or the ideal is 2.2. Okay, maybe I'm gonna adjust my take profit to 2.2 rather than two, and I should capitalize on more opportunities. Okay, so our max ideal, so this is just basically what uh, the max risk to reward that was hit over the course of the uh, trading period, okay? Um, that we didn't get to capitalize on entirely. So we the, the max that we actually hit was 2.04 because that's where our target was. But if we let it roll out, how, what was the highest that it went? And 2.87 was the highest that, that one of them went. That's pretty good, right? We can see that our target at 2R is actually roughly in the same area so far as the ideal and max ideal. So this is really good stuff, okay? That means that we're we're taking profit when we, when we should be, okay? We can see could have, break even or max ideal is, is zero. So that's great. Okay. That means that we didn't have any that could have broken even or profited that were losers. Uh, and so that's good. Right. Um, now going into the next section here in, into the advanced analytics, we can see um, over on the summary again, just 1.43 R. We can say that our average duration of a trade is uh, 36 minutes. We took 11 trades and so far we've traded less than a month at 24 days. Okay, so that's interesting to note. You can start to see how big your session starts to become. And again, you're getting more statistically relevant data the longer that your account goes on. Okay, so that, that's always good to know. Now, if we look at our total winners, we have five best win 2.01, average win 1.43. Okay, so this is what we were already anticipating before. We can see the average duration of a win is just less than an hour. Okay, our average win streak is 2.5. And so our max win streak was three. Okay, so that means that we we were on um, three winning trades in a row. And of course the average is gonna be how many win streaks all combined, right, and averaged out. So roughly around, we'll say two, because obviously you can't have 0.5 trades. You'll say two. All right, so. Um, this is going to help you understand your data, especially when you're talking about the max losing streaks, right? This is going to help you with your drawdown to understand, okay, how can I, how much can I afford to lose psychologically if my max losing streak is two? What happens if that was, if that number is 10, right? And the longer the sessions go for, the more this is going to be accurate. And so what happens if you go on a 10 trade losing streak? That means if you're risking 1% per trade, you have to be willing to lose 10% of your account. If you're not willing to lose 10% of your account, then what does that mean? It means you have to adjust your risk, okay? So very, very important stuff. And this is an amazing uh, way to gauge your drawdown and understand how much you should be risking, okay? 
If we look at our performance per day, we can see that again, great, right? We took one hour losses, not too big, but you can start to see that we're really profiting on Wednesdays so far, and we're still profiting on Tuesdays and, and Thursdays. Haven't really taken much on Friday, just to, I think this is a break even here. Yep, break even. Okay, and we're losing on Monday. So now this is great data. We can start to say to ourselves, again, over 100 trades, what does this look like? Am I continuously losing on Mondays? If so, cut that, right? We can really optimize our bottom line if we're cutting out losing days, days that some, for some reason our strategy is particularly prone to losses, right? And again, on days like Wednesday, if this proceeds to be something that is exponentially larger, exponentially more profitable than, than other days, this is a potential day that if there's a setup and it's it sets up nicely, this is a day that we can potentially add risk on, right? Because these are the days that perform better. So again, great to, great to note with uh, your performance per day. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll get to the risk reward performance calendar and we'll start to see how we performed during that month. In this case, we're, we're operating in June. So if I scroll into June, you can start to see here that we had, you know, a lot of green in this month. We had a couple of break evens right here. Very interesting. We can start to see on Wednesdays is, is, has been purely green. Tuesday's been purely green. Um, Thursday's a little, uh, a little lost there, but uh, that's it. Break even on Friday, loss on Monday. Very interesting to see because now we can start to um, note what does a typical week look like? How much R per week are we are, are we typically hitting during this month and during that month? And you know when we go down to our performance per month, we can start to say how or which months are our top performers, which ones are are the worst performers. And again, over time, if you're consistently performing optimally in June, for example, then in June you can be taking these challenges, right? Where you're where you're obligated to hit an eight percent or a 10% target, you know, you want to make sure that you're you're capable of doing so in, in said month. And so it's great to have that data. And again, same thing, if you're having consistent losing months in August, maybe August isn't a month that you should be trading anymore then, or maybe you definitely should not be taking one of those trading challenges then, right? So great data that you can get from these in the performance calculator and the RR performance calendar there as well. Okay. So Obviously the trades by sessions isn't gonna really matter too much in this case because we were trading one session. So again, it doesn't really matter too much here. You can, you can ignore that, but that is it guys. I hope you got some value out of the whole Silver Bullet series and specifically this one here with the analytics and perhaps you can use it to understand how you can be looking at your analytics on your strategies. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will catch you in the next one, all right?